Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for all of your attention so far. We are very passionate about this subject. We're very excited to talk to you today. Now, when I imagine all of you, when I imagine the audience, I imagine a lot of smiley faces and I, I imagine you looking at us. Now, I have Trevor with me here today and I have a question for Trevor. So Trev, do you think everyone who wanted to make it to CXCon today is in the audience with us? Hi, Alex. Uh, sadly, no, I don't think so. I think there's always a certain number of people who can't make it to these events. So I think we'd have to remove some people. Then there are some people who just won't have access to the event. So we've probably got to take some people out there. Then there are people in different time zones, say San Francisco or some of our colleagues in New Zealand. Then perhaps new parents, you know, taking a break from work, feeding and changing their babies or looking after children who are home from school. Then maybe there are drivers loading our supermarket delivery, you know, our supermarket deliveries onto their vans um, and other people in location based jobs. And then you've got the industry standard 35% no shows for various valid reasons. Well, hello, audience. We see you. You are diverse and beautiful, and we have a more accurate picture of you right now. Inclusion is a journey, and its first step is recognizing an awareness about the decisions you make as a company and as an individual. And we invite you to reflect on those decisions as we take you through our own journey to digital inclusion. I am Alex, and I lead the wonderful experience design team at Envika. And I was thinking in preparation for this talk, why does this, what does inclusion matter to me so much? Well, personally, I've been a foreigner for the most of my life, so I have witnessed and lived through uh, numerous cases of exclusion. And as a designer, I believe that we have an incredible set of tools available to us to change things, to make the environments and uh, companies we work uh, with more inclusive. And I'm Trevor. I'm an experienced designer here at Invika. I actually come from a print background, so I want to challenge my visual bias to design accessible products in digital. Um, but I'm also interested in how we work and how culture and values shape our work. As a sector, we've learned how to design for accessibility using all sorts of helpful guidelines. Um, this slide shows a few favorites. The web content accessibility guidelines highlight what to look for. Government digital services show us how it can be done. And Microsoft's inclusive toolkit extends our understanding of ability to consider the temporary and the situational. But it feels like we need to go beyond this and think about the broader approach to design. We felt it was time for us to start thinking holistically. We build accessible experiences, but what about the processes and the people that were involved in those processes? Are we diverse enough? If we understand accessibility as a subset of inclusion, what are the other barriers to access and participation? Clients were a trigger for us in this respect. After the previous CXCon, clients were asking us about inclusion. We recognized it as an area to work on as an agency and for ourselves as practitioners. We needed to focus on it and find some inspiration. I'm not suggesting that the Marvel Avengers showed us the way. Rather, this gif of Thor doing his best to catch his hammer, it gives a sense of what we found. We kicked off with the usual desk research, looking for frameworks and guidelines and leadership. And in contrast to accessibility, inspiration was not so easy to come by. We found a few people like us working with the concept, giving it their best. Inclusive design considers the full range of human diversity with respect to ability, language, culture, gender, age, and other forms of human difference. We discovered a nice piece of continuity. We found that Kat Holmes, who created the inclusive toolkit for Microsoft, she was linked to this body, the Inclusive Design Research Center. This is their definition. Their research is rooted in architecture, 
and the challenge to make material design accessible to all ramps, textured pavements, easy grip utensils. Helpful direction for us in digital, but obviously it's pretty broad territory. How do we explore the full range of human diversity? We started with uniqueness. The layers in these onion models gave us an idea of how we can think about dimensions of difference relating to unique identities. But we weren't really sure about the emphasis on physical characteristics that these models place at the center, pushing cultural attributes and life choices to the outside. We felt that maybe work and culture should be just as important as biology. Thinking about work specifically, HR practices, for example, like manifestos, anonymized CVs, and diverse recruitment, these are recognized markers of inclusion. They influence how we work and who we work with. So from a design standpoint, we had to think about how our organization shapes our practice and our outputs. So leading with that, we went with this idea of dimensions and these kind of spurs orbiting in this model, they begin to pull together some of these threads, the interconnectedness, how ways of working can be powerful vectors of inclusion and exclusion, the broader beneficial impact where human centered design meets hidden needs and improves usability for everyone, recognizing diversity and uniqueness in ourselves and in our users, solutions that adapt to fit the person and their context, adopting inclusive tools and processes as we have in accessible design you know, evolving our practice. Alex is going to talk about how we took our knowledge of these dimensions forward to work on our inclusive skills. Excellent. Thank you, Trevor. Right. Now, on to practical inclusion experiments. So, before we start talking about our experiments, right, so look at this framework that uh, Trevor just talked about. Uh, it's talking about recognizing diversity and uniqueness in self and others. It's talking about inclusive tools and processes, and it's also talking about broader beneficial impact. And if we look at those dimensions, one thing becomes quite clear. Actually, it really reminds of something, doesn't it? It reminds of the framework that every business uses to be successful. So in order to be successful, focus on these three key variables, people, process, and product. And this is the framework we're going to use to talk about our inclusion and diversity efforts with you today. We always start from people. We are designers, so it's very much around based around human needs. So how do we get to an open and honest discussion on inclusion? When we started talking about inclusion, we discovered a very curious, very interesting moment where it's much easier to talk about inclusion uh, through the examples of exclusion. So on this slide, you can see a few of these examples in relation to age, gender, culture, role and appearance. I'm going to read out one of them to you in, in relation to exclusion by gender. There were 12 men in the room and me. They asked me to take notes. I was leading the pitch. I felt undermined and angry. And this is just one of the real stories um, that the team and different people on the team shared with us, personal stories, uh, where we've asked them to reflect on how they were excluded and what could have happened in order to, pre to prevent that. This is where we crystallized our approach to the first workshop which is helping people articulate and tackle exclusion. We start from what was the person excluded from or missed out on, to moving swiftly into what stopped them and what limited their access into how might we solution. So to run you through a very specific, very light example, when I was very personal one, when I was just off my maternity, um, a recruiter asked me to lower my day rate, referring to me as rusty after six months on maternity leave. I felt excluded from access to a job, um, as one would, and what limited my access. It wasn't only external factor by him suggesting it, it was also internal insecurity that prevented me from 
um, from fighting for it. And that made me feel um, quite insecure and, and quite upset. So what could have fixed it and needed to change in order to do that? Perhaps there could have been uh, some solutions that help me see how people in the same situation operate within that negotiation context. It could have been a community that is supportive. So if we are brainstorming, uh, how might we solutions in here, we can see a lot of design that comes into fruition at the end of this workshop, kind of establishing and figuring out on how we act on these cases of exclusion. So here's one example, right? And we all went through them. There were numerous, the workshop was quite long. We um, ended the workshop on three quite key things that we carried away from it. We definitely established that there is a need for space. So we need to keep talking and doing um, work around inclusion. We needed actions. And the next biggest action was to map what does inclusive look like in every stage of our project currently? And then where do we need to move from that state? And then we've amended um, some tools and artifacts that we already had within the business as an answer to what needs to change. So there were some micro actions around tools that, that we established in here. For instance, and here you can see one of our new joiners checklist, and you can see that the things we started to ask for are around how people would like to work as well as any of the uh, physical enablement uh, they may need and so on so there are a lot of different things we contribute and we changed within that, that uh, new joiners checklist similar situation with our employee manual where we built a lot of scenarios on the basis of ensuring equal participation so how do we answer all of the questions that people may have around you know um, having that access to to certain services and to certain certain things that they need as being an employee. Uh, so you can already see how that workshop impacted the way we thought um, across the company at, at that point. But I would argue one of the most important things that we discovered uh, during that workshop is we did find our heroes and the heroes do not necessarily, you know, reside in HR or people in learning or anywhere else. Um, those are people across uh, the agency. They can be, it's in completely different roles as people who are passionate about inclusion and are willing to work to make their organization better. Then moving on, remember our diagram, we talked about people, now we're going to talk about process. So how do we get more inclusive in our processes? And remember what we mentioned was the biggest outcome of the first workshop is we have to map things. And I appreciate this is a bit overwhelming as a visual, but what it represents, it's it's a usual um, map. So this is a journey, or if you would like even a service journey, because it shows us the front stage and the backstage. We're mapping inclusion opportunities across the project cycle. We define inclusion in here as equal opportunities for participation. So take your average journey through the project from when you scope it to when you allocate people to it, to when you do certain things within the design project to make it work. Uh, these are the rows on the top and then uh, the kind of horizontal swim lanes represent what processes do we already follow to ensure inclusion? What are we doing well? What are we doing not so well? What should we be doing to get better? The next steps, the owners, the areas of investment and so on. We've done that twice. We've done that for inclusion opportunities across one given project. We just took it as an example, started small. And we've done the same with mapping specifically accessibility as a subset of inclusion in here using the same methodology of a similar journey of an example project. Main conclusion. There was no consistency in our processes. So people who were very passionate and are very passionate about inclusion made sure that they are inclusive, but it wasn't on any level of, you know, commitment. So what we understood is that we have to get as a company, we have to get to consistency through really small actions. So we need to start small. We need to start getting to that baseline. So first one was getting a baseline and kind of basic checklists within certain departments, within all of the departments, in fact, to get to um, what we understand by inclusion, what we understand by accessibility, what are the things that, that need to happen in those spaces. We also bettered ourselves so the, the you know, you can guess from the um, branding that has changed and some other things around our brand expression that 
we are um, looking to become triple accessible. This is the work that we have started and we're hoping to continue in the new year. And that's the important change for us. There are also micro changes to how we do things. For instance, a lot of our projects, in fact, all of them contain research. So as we recruit participants for qualitative studies, we ensure that in every six participants, we have at least two with accessibility needs and or assisted digital. So this is how we have changed the default status quo. And the third part of the outcome of that workshop was also documenting commitments. So this is something we started doing, you know, it's as, as it goes, the best vision is the one that is shared and documented and that people have a, a mutual understanding of. So we started documenting our, our ongoing commitment to accessibility, as you can see in here, and the organizations we work with. We have also started documenting our ongoing commitment to inclusion and the organizations that help us with that. We are not alone. Everybody is on that journey together. So we talked about people. We talked about process. Now we're going to talk about product. We are a design team. So how do we support inclusion via product? We are very passionate. Um, about creating tools that respond to real world problems. And one of the problems we found is diverse symmetry. And essentially, everyone will be familiar with this. If you're a creator, you um, must have used this site or similar sites to try and find, you know, home for your mockups to present to someone within a realistic context. As you can see in here, it is a sea of white hands and you need to scroll quite far down to try and find anyone that is actually diverse in, in this crowd. Now, what we realized is we needed to find diverse image libraries. So we have collated a Word document that you can see on the left, which is called Diverse Content Sources. And it was great, but it was living on our um, servers and no one was really, really using it. So we, as designers, we can do better. So we have created a series of it's kind of a series of questions that lead you to an image library that you need. By answering them, you get to um, the source of diverse imagery. And essentially, it's very much around having it at your fingertips and having sources available to you so that you can choose diverse imagery without, um, you know, without searching for it for a very long time. So you can see it in here. There is the best library of people using a device, so free collection of images of women of color in tech, uh, the best free library with diverse people and representation. So anything, you know, very, very diverse set of libraries from uh, non-binary models to collections of uh, diverse imagery, images within um, diff different spaces and different groups of people, as well as cultural communities. So you should try it for for yourself it's it's a very simple site we spun off uh, in the space of three to four weeks and it's very much around pointing people to these resources there was another tool that i'm going to talk about very briefly it's about our core tool set right we use these this is these are the two descriptions from our usual you know deliverables descriptions so from personas which are detailed representations of the typical end users of a site or a service, right? Two journeys, that is a map of the interactions and a customer makes within the business, right? Um, essentially, it's all approximations. And I think we realized very, very quickly that we need to move away a little bit more from approximations to go into the space of really diverse scenarios. This is how our in inclusive uh, scenario generator was born. So essentially, remember what Trevor mentioned in the beginning, those dimensions of difference. So we found a model that appealed to us. It had three core kits around biological differences, personal cultural differences, and organizational occupational differences, which we categorized and we made kind of the content sources very, very clear. And then we created this sentence generator. It generates a sentence such as Zhang Wei, 35 years old, would like to find something. Something is an editable field, so it could be love, it could be bank account, whilst being an ADHD sufferer. And you can see how that, as a scenario, um, triggers thinking around how you know one's access could be limited to certain things and what can we be doing as designers to prevent it. So that's another tool that you should definitely try. Uh, we're very much looking for feedback on it and we're looking to iterate it further. So as a conclusion for us, in order for the inclusion efforts to lead somewhere, we found that 
finding he finding heroes really helps so find people who are really passionate about it such as trevor such as other people within multiple teams um across our organization map as is uh, scenario so this is where designers come very handy we know how to map things and we um we're very happy to help with those things to then progress them to drive action and that's the third and i would arguably say one of the most important uh, steps in here even if it's micro actions if you're going to change one document if you're going to change one thing after you thought about some certain things that need to happen in order to make your organization more inclusive you should do so and that's kind of the main takeaway so for us there isn't ever a conclusion, only a constant work to make things better. And we're very excited to be in this space and we're looking forward to working with more people on it. And thank you so much. And now it's over to Nicholas for questions.